Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Habatithillah continue on in our study Of have mercy upon Salafiyya We reach Where the Shaykh was talking about As a part of this mercy Upon Salafiyya is not carrying fitna from land to land that is not relevant for people and testing the people and forcing the people to take your position so that way people are splitting that may even be from Ahl Sunnah the same minhaj and maybe they differ over one scholar or over one or two Messiah but yet they make tabdi look at even the fitna as we mentioned of now with this new fitna of Sa'afaka and the people now you see one party they're belittling Sheikh Abdurrahman Al-Umaysan uh, who's a Yemeni American scholar and I'll say scholar and he's respected as such uh, now the brothers have many students of knowledge in America and around the world have went against him and because his position was Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi and I don't care really honestly I don't find any relevance for my Salafiyya, nor is it going to make me closer to Allah, nor is it going to make me further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get involved in such fitna or such discord and waste and time wasting. But my point of bringing this up is look at how the people turn on one another over one issue. Yes, you could go into the mas'ala and go deeper and say, okay, Sheikh Mohammed bin Hadi, where's his proof for this? And Sheikh Rabi says this. And, you know, you could get into that stuff if you find relevance for that. But the point is, is how easy we make tibdi of each other. How quickly we drop one another from the sunnah and how quickly the fitness spreads from that. So then if I don't make a clear position for some people, take either black or white, this, is, this one or this one, then I'm a mubtadi'ah. I'm from the waqifun, you know, those who don't, who are in the middle, which is a, a bid'ah in and of itself to say that, to say that, because that's for the application. The Salaf used to use that in applying that as far as those people who didn't, who, who said the Quran, who were silent about saying whether the Quran was created or whether it wasn't created, who didn't take a, a clear position. But the people will say that about taking a fitna, that, that you need to get in, involved in every fitna and take a clear position, or we're going to boycott you. So then the Sheikh, he mentions, he said, in fact, reverts to Islam, leave the religion of Islam. When he enters into Islam, he desires Iman. He desires comfort, tranquility, and serenity in his heart. But the reality is that by the morning, he is argumentative, and by the evening, he is misguiding. And this shows that people flip-flop because they get involved in things that have no benefit for them and that confuse them and don't find comfort in their religion. That's what I mean. Islam is supposed to bring comfort to the heart. And if you're saying Salafiyya is Islam, you should find even more comfort from being guided to Ahl Sunnah. It should not make you more confused, more distorted, have less answers. It's supposed to give you more clarity. Or what's the purpose of following a minhaj if you were you, if you don't know whether truth is, is true and falsehood is falsehood? You can't distinguish between haq wa battle. You can't be, distinguish between sunnah wa bid'ah. Wallah mistan. Those people in foreign countries are ghuraba, isolated and alone, very few, and countries which do not rule by the sharia of Allah, not believing in paradise nor hell, despite this from the lands of Tawheed and Sunnah. They are issued with meager, lowly disputes, which are then magnified by stupid, foolish individuals due to ignorance, desires, and despise his bia, to the extent that the Muslims in those countries begin to boycott each other and their unity is weakened. So the point is, is it's actually from Hezbiya that people interject this fitna. That they want you to get involved in the fitna. That they drag you into the fitna. This is a part of Hezbiya. This is a part of the distorted principles that we want to avoid. Not min, min ahl sunnah. Not min usul uh, ahl sunnah. Wala qawaid ahl sunnah. Wala dawabit ahl sunnah. It's not from the principles, the criterion of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. But instead it weakens ahl sunnah. Then the Sheikh said, have mercy upon Salafiyya. By Allah, most of your opponents today do not criticize Kitab al-Tawheed, Thalatha Usul, or Aqidah al-Wasatiyya. Your opponents are too worthless to criticize such strong mountains of knowledge. 
However, your own actions and statements have caused people to flee away, as well as the fact that you have left the way of the well-grounded scholars. Our Sheikh bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala lived 70 years and since 1350, 1925, he has been teaching and spreading the Salafi Dawah and defending it. By Allah, they did not find anything about him that we sh would shy away from and we are not able to defend. So his opponents returned back, abject and sorrowful because he was an Imam of Sunnah and he didn't entertain this kind of splitting and discourse, a uh, discord. He was an imam of bringing the people together based on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. He didn't compromise, but he didn't come up with new qawaid and new ways of attacking one another from Ahl Sunnah. But he rectified. That was that imam. That's why we say those people are imams of the Sunnah. They're the muslihun, bi'idnillah, bi'idnillah, by the permission of Allah. And we uh, believe this, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of judges. But we see from their action and their dawah that they controlled fitna. They stamped and squashed fitna. But you find some individuals now, and even some younger scholars, they fuel fitna. That they are the, actually, they are the sticks and the twigs of igniting fuel and fitna in various countries and people leaving the deen of Allah and leaving the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he says, this is how the truthful followers should be, the sincere Salafis. Their standing is for the sake of Allah. Their statements are in obedience to Allah, and their actions are upon the Sunnah. They show mercy to the people and clarify the truth with evidence and reasoning. This is why I say to you, this is why I say to you, uh, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he describes about how Ahl sunnah is when dealing with Ahl Bid'ah, with Ilm al Fiqh, he said, Al Ilm huwa Silah. And prior to him, there may have been someone from the Salaf who said it, but this is what I remember from reading from uh, uh, Imam Ibn al Qayyim. He said, Al Ilm huwa Silah, that the knowledge is a, it's a sword and it's slicing away the heads of Bid'ah and innovation in their arguments. And also, I've heard Imam Abdul Masin al Abad mention this as well. Al Ilm huwa Silah. And when you reflect upon that, you wouldn't have to get emotional and say, oh my gosh, I, I don't like you because you're supporting Sheikh so-and-so, your position is with him, your position is with student of knowledge so-and-so, we take the position of the Mekteba only, we take the position of Medina only, we take the position of uh, Troyd only, we take uh, Dar uh, uh, Alum only, or whatever. But instead, you would say, we take the position of qala Allah wa qala Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The more knowledge you have, you can slice through that. And then when they step to you with nonsense and hisbiya and garbage, you have the sword of the sunnah with knowledge. And you pull that sword out, which is ilm wa fiqh, and you slice the head off their arguments of battle and falsehood. And you don't have to be emotional about it. You don't have to go to Jawas and go beyond the bounds and curse people and attack people, but you have knowledge just like, that's the difference between those ulama and those mountains of knowledge is when you come to them, they don't have to scream, but they can deal with it so strong with evidence, with qala Allah wa qala Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa qala sahabi wa al-aqwal jamhur ulama wa ijma al ulama, they come like that, they come strong and they can deal with the shubahat, they deal with the doubts. But the person who's weak in argument, that's just saying, what? The, the esteemed sheikh said, so-and-so said, and that's it. Because they don't have any evidence and they don't even know what delil is. They don't even know what evidence is. They have no evidence and they use scholars who may differ with the rest of the ulama. Their ijtihad is as, as delil, best. But no, but the, the more fiqh and the more ilm you get, you can see a little bit more into some of those masail and, and, and sometimes distinguish when it's ijtihadat of the shaykh. But that comes with ilm of fiqh. You're not going to get it by just uh, sitting and not seeking knowledge. The shaykh said, have mercy upon Salafiyah. Beware of suspicion. Suspicion is the worst type of speech. Upon you is what is apparent. Verily information brought to you. Weigh 
everything upon the scales of knowledge and justice and act accordingly with determination and mercy. Do not make Salafiyah the house of a particular sheikh. SubhanAllah. Whoever enters into the house is Salafiyah. That's beautiful. We don't say, someone just wrote to me recently, what do we say about you know somebody who's just talking about Sheikh Rabi'i? Sheikh Rabi'i, that's not the, the, the asl there. Sheikh Rabi'i is an alam of sunnah. He makes mistakes and he yusibu he, yukhti. He's an alam. And we love him for his ilm of fiqh. But we don't follow his mistakes and yes, he makes mistakes. It's every time he makes uh, a tabdi of someone, is it always the haq? Like some people will make you believe? No. Some of those things are much more detailed issues than what has been presented. And that's from his itch he had, but you blind following and you cutting off people for taking a different opinion, that's where you're gonna be in trouble. Because you made taqlid and you just spoke and just carried and spread and spread fitna maybe about someone from Ahlul Ilm. So this is why it's very important that the the quiet salafiyah, usul salafiyah is not Shaykh Rabi'i. Usul salafiyah is not Shaykh Abayd said. Usul salafiyah is not Shaykh Ahmed al Najmi did or said or Shaykh Muqbal or whoever from our, our, our Imams of the Sunnah. Walla bin Baz, Walla al Albani, Walla bin Uthaymeen. That's not the usul of Salafiyyah. Sometimes a person could have been dealt with in a bad manner by the Shaykh. And they have personal issues with him. So now you're going to say, uh, make tabdi of this person because he doesn't agree with you or he, but if he is speaking ill, like spending their time and their effort and their energy speaking about ulama of Ahl Sunnah, then of course this is something to be uh, weary of. And those individuals are someone to be weary of. But we don't say that their statements is the usul of Salafiyyah. La, la. Then the Shaykh says, Salafiyyah is the religion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is, is the methodology of the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'een and tabi'een and imams of the religion. Nobody's expelled from Salafiyyah except with evidences and certainty, not due to desires, personal interest, and the shaitan. And that's very important. That's very important for us to understand. And uh, we're going to, in the future, go over uh, Sheikh Ahmed uh, Najjar's beautiful small treaties about this issue of expelling people from Salafia to give us a little more insight, a little more details uh, about this issue because it's very important that people, it's so strange, people think if someone is refuted or has been ref refuted in one issue that they're uh, a mubtadi'ah. No. Don't you know that Bin Baz refuted Al Albani and Al Albani refuted Bin Baz on issues? They differed and they had different. Imam Muqbil refuted both of them and differed with them in issues. Uh, many of uh, the Imams of the Sunnah throughout history, this is just in contemporary times, so you can get a grasp of this. But Imam, do you think Imam Ahmed agreed with Imam Shafi'i and everything? Or Imam uh, uh, Abu Hanifa? Or Imam uh, Malik? La Abidin. They all, they all, uh, you know would refute one another in things they disagreed from ijtihadat or or whatever the case may be but that didn't they didn't the difference between them and us is one we have no knowledge in fact so we differ because we don't like the way someone said something we don't like someone's attitude we don't like the fact that someone didn't say uh imam in front of sheikh so-and-so or this and this and this, so we actually make tibdi and cut each other off, or say he's speaking ill about Sheikh Obeid. He didn't say Alama Obeid. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. We are a different breed, a different breed of jahiliya, and of ignorance, I should say. And the reason I say that it's ignorance because you even have this from some students of knowledge that they're the ones who say this. So then, of course, the lay person's going to say this. The student of knowledge who studied under many mashaykh, you, you wonder what did they gain? Yes, they gained something here, they gained something there. But you're like, subhanAllah, you're still totally on taqlid and, and blind following like the Sufis? Really, that's what you learned after 10, 15 years of Talib al-Ilm? 20 years of Talib al-Ilm and that's that's all you got? SubhanAllah, had a musibah kubra. So, ahabatifillah. It's not about personal interest. It's not about letting the shaitan intervene. We should not be quick to take people off the da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah. That's not in our hand. But instead we look at principles and a soul and it's, it's, and, and also leave that to the ulama. 
I get people all the time, they send, oh, Muhammad Munir said this, so-and-so said this, she did Muhammad did this, he said this, so-and-so did this. You know, they want more and they want any kind of way to pull somebody off the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anything they can get. Even if it was a mistake, Allah told they're off the sunnah now. Because if we make that, if we make your principle of every time someone makes a mistake, they're off the sunnah, there would be no imams. There would be no one on the sunnah because the Prophet said, All the children of Adam sin. And the best of those sinners are those who repent. So it's very important for us to understand. Very important. Just because someone's been refuted doesn't mean they're a mubtadi'ah. So you've got to learn how to distinguish. That comes from fiqh. That comes from study. You have to learn these things. And that's why I keep emphasizing this because I want you to understand that that because someone is refuted, even if it's something in their usul, because perhaps the person who's refuting is the one who's mistaken. If you don't have the tools, you can't even tell who's right and wrong because you're on taqlid anyway. You just want to follow the one who's most famous. That's what you're on. So that's a very dangerous thing. Oh, Sheikh so-and-so, his name has been translated for us many more times. We don't know this other Sheikh, so he must be right. This is what the people take as their usul and their qawaid instead of the wabit the shara. Allah is and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.